Well, good morning, everyone. It is great to see you all here as we worship the Lord together. Uh, it was fun to go on vacation, but it's always great to come back and see smiling faces, people I know. Uh, great to be here and worship together uh, in this place. Uh, as we uh, gather, just a few things to share with you. If you're gathering with us online, we invite you to mark your attendance uh, saying hello, uh, comment. It's always great to see the online interaction, and so we invite you to put your comments there. Of course, if you're here in person, hello. <laughs> Good to see your real faces. Uh, we are trying to do something new in the sanctuary. You might note that in the pew in front of you, there's now a little white card that says welcome on it. And uh, if this is uh, a time that you feel like you're here for the first time. I don't see any first-time visitors, but this would be the card that uh, you could fill out and then put into the offering plate on the way out um, and, uh, or hand it to me or someone uh, in the church and just announce your presence, that you're here. Uh, and this is a way for us to get to know one another, and so I invite you to fill those out. Uh, since I've been gone for a while, I'm going to spend some time with announcements to make sure that we've covered everything. Uh, is to note that uh, t today we are doing a joint worship service with Woodsville and North Haverhill here at North Haverhill at 10 o'clock. But next week, uh, Woodsville will be at 11.30. We see some applause. Yay! <laughs> that officially means fall is starting, right? So we can do that. Uh, and so Woodsville will be at 11.30 starting next week at the Woodsville Church. And so for those who might sleep in at the 10 o'clock service, just note there's another opportunity uh, just down the road there at Woodsville, 11.30. And then uh, Warren at 1 o'clock. Uh, question? Can we start here at 10 or go back to 9.30? It'll still be 10 o'clock here. Yeah. yeah. Good question. <laughs> 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 Applause for those who like that extra half hour of sleep. I love it. <laughs> this is good. Um, the other thing to note, if you are watching online, is that the worship services can be downloaded through our website, and you see the uh, address there at uh, haverillumc.org forward slash worship. Um, that way you can follow along with the service. Uh, we've kind of minimized the number of slides that we're showing um, so that uh, it just is easier for our media team. Uh, and uh, so if you're at home and you're watching this, but you're like, not sure what hymn they're singing, perhaps we're muffled in our scripture reading, uh, that you'll be able to follow along as well. And uh, that's a good thing to see. And John is waving. Okay. <laughs> Althea's doing math in her head, and she's showing us the graphic uh, that uh, for the uh, rummage sale, yard sale, uh, the church raised $8,042.25. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So, yes, indeed. And uh, thank you to all who participated in that and contributed and put in uh, time and energy. And I think it is worthy to note John Page's effort in making that happen. Can we give him another applause? Because that it doesn't happen without his work. So, thank you, John, for that great work. <laughs> all right. Looking for volunteers for next year already. I think is what it is. Um, just to note that in two weeks, uh, we will be doing our own kickoff or rally for the fall. Uh, so that's going to be September 12th. That's the Sunday after uh, Labor Day. And uh, that's officially when we'll be kicking off our programs for children's and adult education. Uh, there's more details to come. We've got some exciting plans going on, but I just want to whet your appetite that there's going to be something coming uh, and to note that that's happening. Uh, note also that we have opportunities as a church uh, for participation in worship as we're gathering here in person uh, for ushers and greeters, and so we have a sign-up list that I'll be passing out shortly. Um, also, that downstairs for refreshments, it's always great to have persons sign up to be a part of that, and so uh, we invite you to volunteer and participate in the life of the church in whatever way you would feel led. Uh, there's always uh, some room on the media team as well, and we try to be gentle with those who are joining the team uh, so that we can uh, grow in how we do our online ministry as well. Um, so with those opportunities in mind, one thing that is just our reality is that we always have to have a, a note about everything we plan is just in case if uh, COVID happens, we might have to change our plans. And this is just part of our reality during this time of the pandemic. Uh, for our church, uh, if you haven't seen this graphic in a while, just to remind us that we are following a measured response. Uh, we are keeping very close tabs on how many uh, active cases there are in our community. And the magic number are 5 and 15. 
That is that uh, we gather here in this green zone until we see five cases in our community. And that means that when we get to five cases, we're going to invite people to wear masks in church and to practice social distancing. If you're in your own family, of course, you can sit as close as you want with your family members. That might still be six feet away, but still, uh, you know, that, that's the, uh, the, that yellow zone is going to be the safer you know, to, at home kind of thing, but it's okay to gather in person. Uh, but then when you get to 15 cases, that's, that we're going to call that the red zone. That's a pretty high number for us. That we're going to tell people stay home. Uh, we are going to be doing our best to make sure that all the media is working well for you so that you can watch the services from home. Uh, some people have been preferring that because you can stay in your socks and your pajamas and just watch the uh, service from home. But of course, it's much more enjoyable, I think, to be here in person. So just note those magic numbers, 5 and 15. And uh, we'll send out emails and put it on Facebook to make sure people know what zone we're in. Uh, and right now we're in the green zone. So yay, we're here. But uh, I think with this new variant that's going around, we recognize that it's likely that we're going to have to shift, again, COVID depending on what's happening with our plans going forward. Um, a couple of other things, just note that I'm here throughout the week at different times, and if you'd like to connect with me for a coffee or just a conversation, uh, maybe you've got some deep spiritual questions, some longing you need to work through, uh, just give me a text or a phone call. I'd be glad to set up a time to meet with you. Uh, the only day that I have off is Mondays, and so don't, if you call me Monday, you can call me. It's just I won't answer. It just works that way. Uh, but I'll make sure to get in touch with you Can we set up something through the week. Um, also, some numbers to be in touch with. I know that uh, staying home, uh, particularly during this uh, pandemic time, it's uh, stressful. And so we want to make sure that the, uh, the numbers for assistance for those who are dealing with all kinds of life issues would be available to you. So uh, we do work with some of our local partners in terms of our mental health and collabor collaboration in that way. And so uh, those are some of the numbers to be in touch with. Uh, those are also on our website. And so if you're ever interested in uh, knowing those numbers, you can always just go to haverhillumc.org, and I think it's forward slash care or serve. Uh, one of those two will get you these numbers to be in touch with. Now, before I move on to uh, other things, uh, there is one last announcement that's not on the slides. We have two people who are turning 83 this week, and today is Gail Gadwa's birthday, 83, and on Tuesday, Becky Marcy. So let's uh, applaud for them. But I, I wonder, Jeff, can we do a happy birthday? Sure. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Gail and Becky. Happy birthday to you. Amen. All right. All right. And, and no, we won't do that for everyone's birthday. Just, you know, just for fun. But I invite us to stand as we sing our opening hymn. It's hymn 660. Uh, God is here.
number one. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Jeff. During that hymn, I felt like I was back in choir rehearsal. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know that. I think I'm like, okay. I'll... Is that a good one? Or a good thing or a <laughs> it's a good thing, actually. But it's, it's... remember how we used to struggle sometimes? Or what? I do, I do. Okay. Oh, she did. Okay. Good morning. Would you please stand if you are able and join me in the affirmation of faith in your bulletin and also in the hymnal on page 884. Oh, and it's up there too. That helps. Not for me, but okay. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God, where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture reading this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For, this, for in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the glory of Patre. seated. <laughs> it is uh, great to come back and to be with all of you uh, in uh, being away 
Uh, one of the things that happens as a pastor is you look to uh, who in the church is able to take on some of the responsibilities that I might normally do. And uh, one of the things that's very true about these congregations, both North Haverhill as Woodville and Warren, is the strength that we have as a church in the many people who can step up and really take ownership of what happens for the worship service. And I want to just take a moment and really recognize uh, all of those who helped to be a part of that. And, you know, we had Jim Bellier and, and Doug McDonald and John Page who helped lead, as well as uh, David Clement, to share their testimonies and uh, their willingness to step forward and share with us and just think how rich we are as a congregation for people who are willing to share their gifts and talents and, and not only for those who might speak up front but you know producing the bulletin uh, Lisa McDonald helps put the bulletin together and and send that out Lakeman McDonald thank you very much uh, and <laughs> I, I see it you know from up here I see what's going on uh, we, and distributing it out to those who are still at their homes, being able to sure that they get the bulletin. We have a media team in the back. We've got several people. And I know it doesn't always work out well, but it's always great when people are, are putting their best effort and making that happen. We have refreshments that are happening, greeters and ushers. And as we talk about all the things that happen in the church, we recognize how many people uh, are a part of what happens in the life of the church. And that's exciting uh, for me as a pastor to know that I can step away and know that uh, you guys are going to do a great job, uh, even if I'm stepping away. But let's take a moment, just acknowledge uh, the gifts that everyone has provided. And what, what's great about that is recognizing that that's actually how God designed the church. God designs us as his people, as the church, to be a body in which everybody has gifts, talents, and abilities to share, to be a part of what God is doing for the world. It is God's intention that the church would not be a pastor who's doing all the work, or that you might have a select staff committee who makes sure that the you know, group happens or whatever else, but really that everybody who is part of the church has something to contribute and is a part of this great whole of what it is. Um, I've heard various uh, people, when they have troubles with the church, well, they say, well, the, the, the church or the pastor should figure it out. And uh, I, I think sometimes the, the comment should be, well, who do you think the church is? Because you are the church. <laughs> if there's something that needs to be figured out, we have to figure it out together. Because it's not somebody else's uh, church. It's your church. It's you, the people, uh, who are part of God's contribution, what God is doing in the world. And so uh, I, as I was reflecting on coming back and kind of recognizing the gifts that God has given to us, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the nature of who we are as a church and who God calls us to be as the church together. Uh, there is a, a book that was not incorporated in our New Testament that was written in the first two centuries after the death of Christ. And many of the early churches enjoyed this writing, and uh, there's some reasons why it wasn't included in our New Testament. But for many years, uh, church leaders found that this was helpful for church people to hear the stories from a man uh, named Hermes. And so there is a book that he wrote called The Shepherd of Hermes. And essentially, the great story is that there is this devout Christian by the name of Hermes, and he prayed devoutly to God, and he prayed that God would provide some sort of insight, some wisdom about what God is doing in the life of the church, what God is doing in the world, what God is calling us to do. He longed for God to share wisdom and insight and a vision for what God was doing. And so the story goes, as he was praying, an angel came to visit with him and uh, began to talk with him. And the angel is a little bit annoyed. He says, you, you stop praying. God, is this really just sort of annoying? You keep praying for the same thing over and over. And he says, no, I, I de desperately desire for this wisdom to be made known, for God to reveal to me some truth. And the angel says, well, even though you might not be the most worthy of God's servants, God has chosen to answer your prayer. It's kind of an interesting way to start a book, right? Revelation from God. By the way, you're not the first choice. You're sort of the second or third choice, but God decided he's going to speak to you anyway. But the essential piece of this vision that Hermes has is, is a vision about how God is building this beautiful temple and is being laid out stone by stone. 
And as it's being built on this cornerstone, this foundation which is Jesus Christ, each stone is placed and shaped according to God's plan and is, it is following its true and noble best and is being constructed one stone at a time. And we can even hear sort of the echoes of history of all the faithful who've come before us, whom God has called and brought to be the life of the church, who are building together this great cathedral of God's kingdom of what he is calling us to be about as his people. But another piece of the, the story is the angel describes how each stone is being tested, that there comes an angel who touches each rock, each stone with a rod. And as it touches the stone, the stone shines with glory almost becomes like a gem. You think of a ruby or an emerald or even gold or silver. It exposes its true nature once it has been tapped by the, this rod, this uh, divine rod of God that touches the stone and it reveals its inner character so that it is then a radiant, brilliant demonstration of what God is building of this temple of God's kingdom. But some of those stones also crumble under the weight under that purification process. And so there became the emphasis that not only are we part of God's great creation, but we're also called to live in humble service before God. To recognize that it's only in Christ's righteousness and our, not our own that we find our true brilliance of who God calls us to be. And that our pride and our hubris and, and other things that would distract us would ultimately be a corruption to our nature of who God calls us to be. We hear an echo of what I was just sharing of the story of the shepherd of Hermes in the reading we had this morning. Because that we hear from 1 Peter is that God has called us to be living stones. Christ is that cornerstone. If we were you know, to look at the architecture uh, of those days, there would be a cornerstone in which it would set the parameters for the building. A strong stone that would help to give the direction for that stone, for that whole temple or the building that was being constructed. And each of those stones would be cased in next to that and shaped so that it would fit according to the design of the builder. And I was thinking through this, one of the wonderful things we have in New Hampshire, all these wonderful granite walls. Um, I know when I drive through the countryside, I see all these wonderful granite walls. And I recognize that if you were to go in and try to take a middle stone out of that wall, what would happen? it pretty much collapse. <laughs> it, the, each stone builds upon each other. There has to be some sort of uh, strengthening and support that happens with one another. And we see that as part of the nature of the church is that God is calling us to be living stones. And part of that living stone is that we are in support and in connection with one another. And that's exactly who God calls us to be as living stones is this connected community in which we are supporting one another and being a part of God's work. That his revealing of his brilliance through our nature, our character, who he's called us to be, is made in part because of the shaping of how we are built together as his church. Uh, together as his people. So we see this beautiful picture of this spiritual house that is being built together. And what's interesting is that the idea of a living stone, when we think of stones, you don't think of things that are going to get up and walk away. You don't think of things that are alive. You think of things that are pretty much, they're going to stay there for the next thousand years because unless something is moving it, it's not moving on its own. It is not alive. But Peter uses the phrase living stones to help emphasize both the foundational, solid, concrete nature of who God is and who God calls us to be, something that cannot be moved or shaken, and that's that image of the stone. But we are not dead. We are alive, that God calls us to life, God calls us to liberty, God calls us to experience this vibrance and the power and passion of God as we are being built together as his people. So it is not just that you are stones, you're, you're just sitting there like a stone. Some of you might know people who, when you talk with them, they're kind of like stone face, right? But, but God doesn't call us just to be stones, he calls us to be living stones, the living stones is part of Christ, who is our living stone as well. And we recognize we gain our life, our lifeblood, from the one who is the God of life. That the one who died was also resurrected. That he demonstrated that not even death can conquer life, because in him is life itself. And his life becomes the light that is the, the pathway, the vision, the understanding for all mankind. And that we gain our life as we are connected with the source of life. And that when we are disconnected from that source of life, we feel that coldness of the stone enter our bones. 
but it is in that connection with that source of life that we feel the vibrance and life of who God calls us to be, to be living stones for God. So essentially, we are all called. Every one of us are part of that wall, that great stone masonry of the temple of God. Each one of us fit to the temple. No person has the opportunity to be part of the church and say, I have nothing to do with it. Because guess what? You are part of the church as one who responds to the call and whose life is built on Christ. You are part of God's church. Now, I mention that because during this time of COVID, one of the things that's happened is that we were all told, go home, watch Netflix, and binge watch for as long as you can and avoid what's going on in the rest of the world. And as a church, one of the things that has happened as an impact is that all of the things that we might do in terms of the ministry and activities or the worship or teaching of the church, most people took that break and said, we're taking time off. It's COVID season, didn't you hear? We're going to go back to our home and disconnect from what's happening with the life of the church. But the truth is, as we connect with Christ, who is our living stone, he builds us to be his holy temple. We all have gifts and something to share as God's people, as the church. And even if it's from home, writing messages, you know, we're talking with somebody today about being online, that we can have a greater online presence, not just by broadcasting, but by interacting and connecting and, and talking with people online. And we can be the church in many places around the world that we could not have been before. I think that's one of the beautiful things that God has done during this time of COVID is that the church can no longer be described as what happens in that little white building on the side of the road. The church is now universal and connecting with people on every part of the globe in ways that could never have been imagined before. There are people who might watch this service from overseas, from India, from Afghanistan, from Finland, from Europe, wherever they might be, and watch the service here, and then the next hour to watch another service in California, to watch another service in Canada. This is the universal piece of what it means to be the church. The church is now erasing the dividing lines that define who is a part of God's church. We're no longer having to be you know, tailored into, well, I'm a Methodist from New Hampshire and I can't connect with the Pentecostals from Britain or from Brazil, but recognizing that those dividing lines have been erased. What a beautiful thing that God is calling the church once again to a unity that could not before be seen as he calls each one of us to be a part of his great work in the world of his ministry. And that is something that is to be celebrated, that we are indeed called. And the other piece of that is just the reality that everyone is needed. When you say, oh, I'm a part of this, but I'm not contributing. I'm going to be a part of this, but that's not, I'm not going to share of my gifts, my talents, my abilities. That is not what it means to be part of the church. When people join the church, we ask them if you're willing to share of your, your time, your treasures, And to be a part of this presence of God, to be part of what God is doing, your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service. That's a pretty long list. But the truth is that when we are part of the church, we don't have the privilege of saying, well, I have my membership. You know, how many of you have been part of a health club in the past? You know, some of us. Now, one of the fun things about being a part of a health club is that once you sign up, it's very, very difficult to not sign up or to somehow take out your membership. And part of that is you have to go see the manager who then talks you into about how you need to be more healthy and you can never get rid of your membership. But some people treat their church membership like being at a health club and that, oh, well, I was you know, baptized there 20 years ago and I've come for Christmas a few times uh, and that's all that it requires of me to be a part of the church. But that's not at all what the scripture tells us of what it means to be a part of God's body, the church. It means that there is a connection and a support and in a a way that God has gifted us to support one another that is dismissed and, and honestly we miss out when people reserve their time and say, well, I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to be a part of what the church is about. It really uh, it takes away uh, from what it means for God to be calling us as his people, his Christian community here in this area when we decide that I'm not going to contribute, I'm not going to be a part of it. So we, we are all called, and we are all needed. You know, that old uh, Dr. Seuss book, you know, Who Hears the Who? Uh, Horton Hears the Who, and, and even the smallest creature is, is needed. Every one of us has something to contribute. And so, just to say that you are the church. You know, sometimes when we think about the church, we think about the, you know, the pastor's name out front. 
And some pastors make sure that that is really big, you know, doctor so-and-so on the front because that's, you know, oh, I go, I go to the church where that guy is preaching. Or I go to the church where that guy is preaching. But that's attendance. That has nothing to do with being a part of the church. You know, it's not about notoriety or getting somebody's name out there. It's about being the community of church and his people together. And we celebrate that. And I think that the, a healthy church celebrates its lay people far more than it celebrates any leadership of a paid staff person, whether it be the pastor or the janitor. The lay people are the, the legs and the arms of the church. The church does not exist without the contributions of the persons, not just with money, but in time and effort and service. As we were sharing in the, uh, the affirmation of faith, the nature of the church, supporting the church, or to witness with our praise and our service. Praise and service together, being a part of what it means to be the church. In the passage we read today, it also describes not only are we living stones, but it describes us as a holy priesthood. Uh, earlier this year, uh, in January, I had um, someone from the conference office share with us in a video call about the nature of the church, and we began to unpack this word, this priesthood of all believers. And what's interesting is when you think about a priest, you probably think of that guy wearing a, a black uh, suit, maybe with a white little dicky on the top, and, and he's going to you know, give you some sort of uh, holy sacrament and move on, and we think, oh, well, I'm not that person. But did you know that the, the definition of the word priest in Latin is bridge? That is, that that person is a bridge between God and people. When God called the uh, Levites to be the priests for the nation of Israel, he called them to intercede, to bring the sacrifices of the people before God, and that they would intercede for the people before God with their prayers and with their activities, that they would always be the presence of the people before God, but they also had the responsibility of sharing God's word with the people, and that as God spoke and God delivered his intentions, that the priests and the prophets would then share that with the people, and they became that bridge between God and humanity. And here's the amazing thing that Peter then goes on to say, and you are a holy priest. Take that just for a moment. What does it mean for you to be a holy priest? Because that's what we are all described as priests before God. Not, not me, not just me, the pastor, the guy who's paid to do that, but, but you. You are a priest. You may be the best and only witness of Jesus Christ that the people in your family, the people in your workplace, the people in your school, the people in your uh, larger community, you might be the only witness of Jesus Christ that they ever see. And so as you share that witness of Christ with, them, with your friends and your family and your co-workers, just to recognize that you are actively working as a holy priest in each of those places. And God has called you to be that priest, to stand in between, to stand in the gap, to intercede for humanity to God and to intercede for humanity by sharing God's word with them, that God has called you to this holy task. Some of you are like, I didn't sign up for that. <laughs> but this is what God has called each of us to be a part of in our own areas of witness. Whether it be in a small town or whether it be in a large city, each of us are called to that area of witness that God has called us to that special community. Could it be that in this time, in this day, in this place, that God has called you for just a time as this to share that message with your people that you know because no one else is ever going to share that witness with them. And here's the holy responsibility. If God has given us that responsibility, he will also hold us to account. I gave you opportunities. I shared with you the message of your salvation. I, I gave you freedom from sin. I, I gave you gifts beyond measure. What did you do? And how were you the witness with the people that I gave you to be in ministry with? We are all called to be holy priests. And as we come together as the church, we share of our experience in being priests. We share with our, our struggles. I have a hard time talking with my coworker. It just seems like, you know, they're always you know, bagging on Christianity or they're always against, you know, something that's holy and, and they're participating in things that I can't agree with and I'm having a hard time. We come together as a church. We start talking to share together how it is we might be better at witnessing, how we might be better in service and ministry to the world. 
And it's described here as living priest, just as the priests bring the sacrifice before God on behalf of the people. We bring our friends and neighbors before God as a sacrifice in prayer. It's often been described that if you talk with God about your friends, God will provide the way for you to talk with your friends about God. I'm going to say that again because I think it's really so cool. Is that if you are willing to talk with God with, about your friends, God will provide the opportunity for you to talk with your friends about God. Again, it's not about you being just, you know, this charismatic, wonderfully well-spoken witness, but being available to let the Holy Spirit work through you. Persons who've been a part of this experience of sharing God's love with another person said, I don't even know what I said. I didn't think about it or plan it ahead of time, but, but God somehow gave me the words or, or an image to share, and, and I don't even know where it came from, it, but it really touched their life. That's the Holy Spirit bearing witness through his priesthood, his church, to bear the witness of what it means to be his people together. And so we are that holy priesthood together. The other great thing about this is recognizing that as we bring that sacrifice before God, we are also called to be that witness of God to the world. And describe, Jesus says, you are the salt of the world. And many times, many times people have tried to figure out what the salt of the world means. Did you know that with every sacrifice in the Old Testament, there had to be salt? It's kind of an odd thing in Leviticus to describe that every time someone brought uh, a sacrifice to the altar, that the priest would add to that sacrifice a sprinkling of salt. There was a bag of salt that the, the priest would grab it and they'd sprinkle it over every sacrifice. What's significant about that, Pastor? The idea is that the salt is the holiness of God and that we as God's presence are like salt crystals to the world. By bearing our witness, we are providing holiness, we are providing witness to the world of God's word and his presence. Wherever we stand, wherever we walk, God's presence, his salt, is infecting the earth so that it becomes holy as a sacrifice before God. Our lives, our witness, become that sacrifice before the Lord and every place that we walk whether it be in our family, in our workplace, every place that we go, we are that salt to the world, that it, as the world, becomes the sacrifice that God has called us to provide as an offering of thanksgiving before God that all would give glory to Him. And so it describes that as the priesthood, we serve the Lord with witness and with worship and with service. This is what it means to be the church, that we are that salt, those priests of God, declaring the praises of God so that all might come to life in Christ, in God together. And so we who had not been a people before, not one particular group, but now called to be the church, are called God's people. Before we had not been a people, but now we are a people, a holy nation that is set before God, so that as the world looks to each and every one of us to recognize what God is doing, that we are providing the witness of God's love and of his sacrifice to all. Now, one way that this happens is we recognize that it is not because of our great wisdom or our great resources or our contrivances of how to make that happen, but God works in subtle and mysterious ways. I've told this story before, but I think it's just an interesting witness, is that somebody had joined the church, and about a month after joining the church, came to me and says, Pastor, um, I kind of like you, but I hate your church. And, and I remember asking, I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, you know, I'm not from the area, and I, I don't know really how to act, and I speak funny, and, and people don't know how to you know, invite me, and I didn't feel very welcomed in the church. And, but he asked, he says, but I, I like having spiritual conversations. He says, where do people like me have a spiritual conversation? I said, that's a really interesting question. I said, why don't you help me figure that out? Because I know you've got, you're telling me about people you have spiritual conversations with. How about if I bring a, you know, a hot lasagna <laughs> and I'll show up at your place and, and you bring your friends and we'll have that spiritual conversation. What do you know? Nine friends showed up and we're having a spiritual conversation with folks who otherwise were not willing to come to church, the building. But as we're sharing in food and fellowship and talking about God, we see the witness of God there. And as we share the word that once you were not a people, but now you are a people, we recognize that all people who feel disfranchised, who are disconnected, who are looking for a, a sense of home, a sense of belonging, that this is who God calls us to be as his kingdom, as his people. That we together are the church, supporting and in service to one another and to God, based on that cornerstone of Christ in our lives. 
So I know I've put a lot out there of the nature of the church, but I hope that something of the images or the words that I've shared with you will resonate in your heart to recognize that each one of us are called to be part of this great ministry of what God is doing in sharing with the world of his love and that each one of us have opportunity to bear witness. Now, as I share with you uh, these words, I know some of you are like, yeah, other people ought to hear that message, right? <laughs> because I've done so much. Other people need to hear this message. Well, and I just say, just of course, take a little uh, humble pill on that and just recognize, thank you for your service. Thank you for being a part of that. But maybe some others need to know that uh, they are a part of this puzzle, this great puzzle of the church together. Some of you are wondering, well, how do I participate? How do I enter into what happens in the life of the church? Well, at first, you can give me a call. I'd be glad to talk with you about how to connect with the church, be part of our ministries together. But there are always opportunities that are being shared. Whether it's you know, United Methodist Women are having a meeting coming up this month, whether it's you know, the food, the fellowship, the uh, greeting, the media team. As we're moving forward to the fall, we're going to be doing some teaching. We're going to be talking about purpose-driven life. There's many different ways that we can participate in the life of the church. And so I invite you to just consider which of those opportunities you might be willing to be a part of. And so let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word and who you have called us to be. Called us to be as priests that you might use our lives as a witness to who you are, to your love and to the atonement and the forgiveness of what you've called the world to. You have called us to be living stones that are made alive, not dead, but alive in each place that we might go. And so, Lord, of the many words that have been shared this morning, Lord, I pray it would be your word that resonates in our hearts, that we would put these into practice in our own lives, in our own locations. And this we would pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite us to stand as we sing In Christ Alone. This may be a new hymn to you, but it's not in your hymnal. It's only going to be on the screen. So I invite you to stand and sing along.
That's a fun hymn. We're going to have to do that again. <laughs> Indeed. But as we uh, gather for worship this morning, we have an opportunity to provide our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. Uh, as you note that they, uh, the ba- baskets are in the back, both for our uh, normal contributions as well as a special mission basket. I invite you to participate as you would feel led in responding to God's call in your life through your gifts at this time. But let us offer a, a prayer of thanksgiving for all that God has provided for us. Lord God, we thank you indeed that you are a loving and generous God. That even when we were no people, that when we were lost and forgotten, but that you have chosen us, that you have called us to be a holy nation of priests and of people of your church, or that we would bear witness in this place through all that you have provided for us. And so, Lord, we ask that you would receive this offering as a portion of all that we have and all that we are, that indeed your kingdom would come. And this we would pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand for the doxology. As we come together as God's people, we have an opportunity to support one another with our prayers, with our presence together. I invite us to share uh, both words of witness as our answered prayers, as well as concerns that we would want to share together. Uh, What would we want to lift up this day as a community? Yes, Elaine. We recognize that the uh, Hurricane Ida, which is hitting landfall, is affecting many people's homes and lives. Um, And so we pray for all those who are impacted by that storm as it's hitting this country. Uh, And so we lift them up before the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, Gail. I had the privilege of attending my class this fifth year of high school. Fantastic. (laughs) Fantastic. Thank you. Gail is celebrating 50th uh, anniversary. uh, Sorry. High school reunion. I'm not sure about anniversary in there, but <laughs> anniversary of school. The, uh, high school reunion. And so we celebrate that. Thank you for sharing. Other stuff. Okay. Uh, John Shirley Cobb. Some of you may be tracking with Shirley. She had a stroke uh, and uh, is going to be in palliative care. Uh, and so we pray for her and her family in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Others would like to So we're lifting up the Conrad family as Becky Conrad went to be with the Lord and uh, we want to continue to be in prayer for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, John. I'll say with a little bit of sadness and a little bit of excitement, but tomorrow is the first day of school. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the joy of the first day of school. Yay. Um, so I'm hearing an echo of all the children who are saying, first day of school. Uh, so we lift all of them before the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, Lisa. Um, yeah. Yeah, the continued evacuation of Afghanistan, prayers for safety for all yeah, that's going on there, as well as all the negotiations and, and the trouble that's there. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, yes. Okay. Prayers for Lois Henderson's uh, brother. And so, Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Yes. Amen, indeed. Yeah, so uh, prayers of thanksgiving, both for Gail's birthday, but also recovering uh, from some health complications. And so we give thanks to God on your behalf. Amen. Uh, yeah. So, prayers for Charlene's mother. She's coming through uh, surgeries and recovery. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Other joys and concerns we'd like to share? Well, let's turn our hearts to the Lord together in prayer at this day. Lord, even as we come before you, we recognize how much you have called us and have chosen us even before we are aware of your presence in our lives. Recognizing that without you, we have nothing but that you call us to be your people. That you call us to share with you the concerns that are in our heart, the struggles that we experience. And Lord, as we have shared our concerns and voiced many concerns of persons in need, both here, people in our own families and community, as well as the concerns in our country with the uh, devastating Hurricane Ida that's coming ashore, as well as the global concerns of what's happening with wars overseas and the evacuation of soldiers and personnel and civilians from Afghanistan. Lord, many of these things feel out of our control. We know that this feels that there's very little that we can do on our own strength. And so we come before you as you are the Lord and master of all things, that we might place into your hands our own stresses, our concerns, our anxieties. Lord, that you would guide and protect and lead us together even in this time of silence as we bring before you even those that have gone unnamed in this moment of silence together. Indeed, it is a privilege, God, that you invite us to know you and to share with you our heart's concern. And this through Jesus Christ, who teaches us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite us to stand as we sing our closing hymn together, hymn number 545, Our Church's One Foundation. I invite you to stand.
As we close in our worship service together today, I want to remind you of a couple of things. First is that there is refreshments downstairs. I invite you to go downstairs and enjoy some time together. Um, also that uh, there are opportunities to sign up to be part of one of the many ministry teams of the church that will be there in the back. I invite you to look that over and place your name as you would feel led. But as we uh, close in our service, I invite you to turn your hearts and your hands to God in whatever way might feel comfortable to you. Lord, that indeed that you would pour out your blessing on each who are gathered here, that we would know of the power of your presence through the Holy Spirit, then indeed we would be your witness wherever we would go. And this we would pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.